lesson we will be focusing on chemical safety and personal protective equipment, chemical concentration and chemical dispensing. Let's get started with chemical safety and PPE. The first thing to be able to identify in terms of chemical safety are warning signs. Even if you are unsure of the chemical you will be able to protect yourself if you can read the warning signs. Here are some common warning signs found on chemicals. The first one we have here is the corrosive sign. This indicates that this chemical will attack and destroy living tissue such as skin and eyes. Then we have the toxic sign. This means that this chemical can cause death if swallowed, breathed in or absorbed by the skin. This is a sign that means highly flammable saying that a specific chemical can catch on fire easily. Then we have the irritant and harmful signs. The irritant is not corrosive, but will make a blister or turn the skin red. The harmful sign looks similar to the irritant sign, but means that it is not toxic, but still dangerous. And lastly is the oxidizing sign. This sign means that this chemical adds oxygen to other substances, that will make it burn more fiercely. These all sound rather terrifying. Luckily, we have PPE, or Personal Protective Equipment, that is easily available and designed to shield you from harm. PPE comes in many forms, such as goggles, disposable surgical masks, respirators, disposable gloves, heat-resistant gloves, disposable aprons, 
heat-resistant aprons, hair nets, and steel-capped non-slip shoes. If any PPE is necessary, it must be worn, no matter how small or quick the job. If you are unsure of PPE procedure, speak to your supervisor about the PPE available to you and ensure that you are always protected. Now that we have chemical safety and PPE covered, let's discuss chemical concentration. Most chemicals are delivered in a concentrated form and need to be diluted, meaning that they need to be mixed with water. The amount of chemical added will vary, so always read the instructions or material safety data sheets MSDS, to make sure you are adding the right amount of chemical to water and not over or under diluting it. Chemicals are measured in ppm or parts per million and depending on the chemical should be at the concentration of 200 ppm. This is very technical and the easiest way to understand chemical concentration is by using test tape. Depending on the chemical there are different test tapes that when submerged in the water and chemical solution will change color. The color can then be compared to colors on the test tape container showing the correct ppm. It is important to check the concentration so that you are sure that the chemicals are doing their jobs properly and the solution is not dangerously strong or overly weak. There are clever methods that altogether remove the worry of incorrect dilution. This brings us to our next point, chemical dispensing. In your work area, you will find automatic dispensers fitted with sachets of common chemical concentrates such as all-purpose cleaner, all-purpose sanitizer and heavy-duty degreaser. Depending on the chemical, there are different amounts that must be added, but they will be added by pumps measured by the dispenser so that you are safe from any chemical contact. If the dispenser is leaking or malfunctioning, don't try to fix it yourself. Contact Diversi, your chemical provider, to repair the dispenser immediately. There is one golden rule of chemical dispensing. Always add the chemical to water, not water to chemical. This is because the chemical will foam too much if it is added first and could come into contact with your skin or eyes, or it could be inhaled. Follow these steps to safely and correctly fill a spray bottle with chemical solution. Step 1. Fill the bottle with clean, cold water to the indicated level. Step 2. Fit the bottle without the lid into the dispenser. Step 3. Using both hands, slowly and evenly push the button to dispense the chemical. Once the light turns green, push the button again. Check the instructions for the specific chemical to determine how many pumps of chemical the bottle needs. Step 4. Once all the chemical has poured into the bottle, Remove the bottle and screw the lid back on. Holding the neck, gently turn the bottle upside down so that the chemical is evenly distributed, without being shaken. Step 5. The chemical is ready to be stored in the caddy and used straight away. Because of the automated dispensing, it doesn't need to be tested for PPM. We have just learnt how to mix chemicals in a spray bottle. Did you notice anything wrong with these steps? Take a moment to think about it. If you said that the steward's ears were sticking out of the hairnet, well done, you are spot on. This is unhygienic and ears must always be kept covered by your hairnet. What do you do if you need a bucket of solution? Well, it all depends on the capacity or amount of water that the bucket can hold. Buckets should have a level indicating a measured cut-off point for water. Then chemicals can be added by the dispenser in a larger scoop. Mix together and then sample with the test paper to ensure you have the correct ppm. Because you are mixing these by hand, make sure your PPE is just right. 
when using the chemicals in a bucket or basin throughout the day, change them regularly to avoid using over-diluted chemicals. This is because you will just be cleaning with dirty, watered-down muck and wasting all your time and energy. Test the solutions every hour to maintain high standards of hygiene and cleanliness. For everyday cleaning, pack your caddy with spray bottles of the chemicals you use most frequently, as well as clean sponges and scrubbers. The caddy should be kept on a trolley with clean water and paper towel, so that you are prepared for any cleaning emergency. Well done on learning all about the chemicals found in your department and how to use them safely. 